Hello, I'm Philly Philly and welcome to my kitchen. It's Wednesday and today we're nearing the end of August, but what we're not nearing the end of yet is delicious sweet corn. And so tonight I'm showing you how I make one of our favorite summer corn salads, which has a ton of variations. So I don't have any information below on the specifics of today's salad. I will add that later. Um, so hopefully if you're watching this as a video, I will have already added that. But honestly, what I want you to see is just the idea and then make it your own, put your own variations. So super excited about this meal because it is almost the end of August. And right now in our area, corn and tomatoes are plentiful and they are at their peak. So uh, earlier today, I actually went to my nearby uh, market and got some delicious sweet corn. I wish I could say this was Jersey sweet corn because I was a Jersey girl and I do believe that they're the best corn, sweetest corn, but I think this is from PA, um, so no shade to PA. I'm sure this is absolutely delicious, but welcome and I hope you enjoy the stream today. Hey Alvin, welcome and hi May, great. Thank you for joining the stream. Um, I'm gonna get started. So uh, again, this is just kind of a technique and, and the idea is, is when we think about bases for our meals, sometimes it's um, bread and it's a bun or it's two slices of bread. Other times it might be noodles, um, pasta could be, you know, Asian noodles, like lots of different kinds of noodles that we could use. And sometimes it could be rice. There's so many different carbs that we can use as a base for our meals. And I believe when I first made this, I, we were just getting bored with salads instead of using lettuce, I wanted corn because corn was really good at that time. And so we just used corn. And I kind of thought that's a great carb to use instead of, you know, I mean, you could obviously add pasta to this or rice or um, quinoa, you know, things like that. But honestly, the corn does the trick. So I've already shucked or husked the corn, I guess, shucked the corn. I can't remember exactly how we all call it, but um, so it's ready to go. But I do want to get a couple things started that will be going in our salad today. And today I'm going to be putting um, a kind of south of the border twist on this salad. But honestly, you could take it many different ways. You could give it an Italian spin. You could just give it a completely American spin. Like there's lots of things you could do and put your favorite flavors in this. So, um, so I'm going to get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is I want to get two of my ingredients I'm going to be using today, which is a poblano and a sweet onion. I want to get those getting some color in my pan. So let me get my pan turned on, get that heated up. And then later I'll be adding shrimp. So this is a salad that could totally just stay vegetarian. Um, and if you didn't do the crema at the end, it could stay vegan. However, I would like to add a little protein and so we're gonna be using shrimp tonight. But first I do wanna get these some color. So I've washed all my vegetables except for my tomatoes. I'll wash them when I'm ready. And oh, by the way, besides my beautiful corn, um, hopefully corn is beautiful where you are gorgeous. And this one ha happens to be white. You know, sometimes I think once we uh, peeled back the husks and it was, uh, you know, tricolor, bicolor. So you just never know what you're going to get. Sometimes it's yellow, but today at the store, um, it was white corn. But honestly, as long as it's sweet, I'm happy. And to these tomatoes that I got that were local, they're just gorgeous cherry tomatoes. You could use any kind of tomato in this for what I'm doing. Um, I kind of like the little ones because they're, you get just a little bit of the snap of the skin, which is so tender and the ju they're juicy. I think they really go well with this, but you could do any kind of tomato. But first I'm gonna get my poblano cut and I'm just gonna cut around. I don't want, there's not many seeds in poblanos, but I don't want any of them. And then what I'm gonna do is just kind of give this, my goal is to kind of have everything be about the same size as the corn kernels. Not perfect, but just generally. My tomatoes and my avocado will probably be the largest chunks in there aside from the shrimp. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these sliced, let me move this so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna get these sliced so that they're about the size of corn kernels. Again, there is no corn kernel police here. We don't have to worry about that. But um, for anyone watching, I'd love to know um, what's your favorite thing to do with corn? Um, or maybe you don't like corn. 
who are you if you don't like corn? But I absolutely love corn, love sweet corn, um, love it when it's peak and in season. Love to do all sorts of things. A lot of you know that we have a tradition here making a corn pie, which is kind of like corn meets quiche um, that a friend of ours in New Jersey taught us. And, uh, but this is a great way to use corn. So there's lots of ways. So kind of want to know how you guys enjoy it. Archie, wonderful. I will definitely send you some of these across the pond for sure. Corn kernels? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those kind of kernels, right, that uh, boss you around. So I've just, you can see, I'll bring this up closer. I'm just kind of giving this a kind of a smallish dice, I guess I would say. And then you could use any kind of onion. You could even use green onion, although maybe I wouldn't put them in the pan. I would keep them raw. And by the way, you don't have to, like we could just keep everything raw in this, of course, except for the shrimp. However, I love poblanos with a little color, a little sear. And so I, and I thought I would let my onions get that flavor just to add that kind of different texture, different layer of flavor, um, especially for the application that I was doing, which is the south of the border twist on this salad. But truly, there's just so many variations, so many ways you could do this, whatever is your fancy. But Arch, what's your favorite thing to do with corn? And same, uh, if you feel like chatting May and Alvin, I would love to know what your favorite thing to do with sweet corn is. These are all diced. I'm gonna get some oil sprayed into the pan. Oh, let me show you kind of the size I got there. You can see there. So these are ready to go in the pan. I'm just gonna get some oil in the pan. A couple sprays. Get those tossed in and get some color. Oh, I can hear them. That's the sound we want, because I want color. These are not going to be sweated. These are going to get seared. And I want to get some nice color, because with color comes flavor, and that's what I'm looking for. That's why I'm giving them some heat. And then we will be adding some shrimp there later at the end. This all should come together quite quick, um, but uh, definitely want to give this a little bit of a toss. There we go. I'm going to get a little salt and pepper in here. And once I get the shrimps in there, I'll show you what's going on. All right. So I just want these spread evenly. And I'm going to like, so I'm going to have this on medium high, high heat. I'm just going to let it, let it go. So let's catch up on what y'all are saying in the chat here. Hey, Barb, how are you? Welcome to the stream. And Arch says, our corn culture is rubbish compared to yours. You guys use it in a million times more than we do. I did not know that, Archie. I did not realize that. And that kind of makes me sad because definitely love, love me some corn. So that would make me sad. So I don't know if you've all seen this trick. And I did not invent this trick. Um, but there's a couple different ways. If you are taking the kernels off the corn, that make it a little bit easier. I have tried the way of doing it horizontally like this, getting one flat end. And that, it definitely works. Um, and of course, you could do it this way. But when I do it this way, corn goes everywhere. I lose my kernels. And I don't want to lose my kernels, you know? So one thing you can do is you can use a, um, like a large bunch pan that has, you know, or a tube pan, you might call. And you can put that right in the middle of the tube that's coming through here that makes you know, the bunch shape. How, and that's what I usually do. However, I, I'm lazy. I don't like to use a bunch of different pans or pots, and certainly Hubs appreciates this too. So this is gonna be the mixing bowl. So the other trick you can do is you can just get a small, smaller bowl, put it inside your larger bowl, and then you take your corn and you start slicing down. What happens is, theoretically, um, this, side of the bowl tends to catch those corn kernels. So that is what I'm going to do today. And you can see for yourself if it catches them. Why I like this way better than the way um, on the side is because I just find that some of the corn kernels get ultimately a little more smooshed than I like. I like to give a lot of respect to my corn kernels. So, because um, Arch, we should give respect to kernels, don't you think? So, uh, so yeah. Now I'm smelling my poblanos and onions. I want to go take a quick peek 
because I bet you they've got some color and give them a quick toss and then I will get the rest of this corn cut. Yep. Oh, nice color going on there. Okay. All right, I'm gonna let them go for a little bit longer so you can see that this corn gets quite, gets quite rid of those yummy kernels because I don't want any kernels to go to waste. And you can also see that I think there are one tiny little kernel, two, three. Whereas usually if you're doing this, it is going everywhere. So at least when I do it, that's what happens. So let me see, what, what's going on here with y'all? So Archie, you're saying 90% is canned and frozen. And I, I will, I mean, this might be controversial, but I do not like canned corn. I love frozen corn. We definitely, I have no problem with frozen corn. Of course, I prefer fresh. Well, well fresh if it's in season. However, um, I don't like canned. There's something about, I'm gonna get my smaller knife, by the way. There's something about the consistency. Um, there's some sort of flavor that happens when, the, when corn gets canned that I just don't care for. Oh, this is much easier. So what I was finding was because of this bowl, my knife being long was, was hitting. So this is just much easier. So you guess got to switch things up, right? But that is really interesting and sad. So uh, Arch, have you ever had a lote, which is absolutely delicious? Um, I did a video with my niece who taught me how to make that um, that first year. I think the first couple months I did streaming. That is absolutely delicious. Now let me show you what I got here. You can see we've got some nice color there. That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to turn off this heat, let this kind of sit until I'm ready to put my shrimp in there. But that's good. That's what I want. I'm going to do one more, um, one more of my cobs. Let's see what y'all are saying. And May says she don't use corn much in Denmark. Really? It's just, I think it's so funny how in different places, um, different foods are used more. You know, there's bigger focus. But that's what I love about learning about different food cultures is because then we learn about foods we're not as used to seeing and different ways to using them, which I think is the best. And I think DS is here. Hey, DS, how are you? Let's see. Oh, and wow, Art, you're giving a lot of uh, U.S. love here. I think the best corn stays in the States, from what I've seen and heard. I, I will tell you, I have never, of course, had corn from anywhere outside the United States, um, but Jersey corn is phenomenal. They are definitely known for their sweet corn, and it does not disappoint. So this could be controversial, but we are not cooking this corn. The corn that we get in the summertime here in Jersey is so sweet that you, well, I'll show you. I know this is from PA, but the same kind of thing was totally sweet. There, I mean, you if it bothered you, if you're like, ooh, raw corn, you could cook it a little. I wouldn't cook it much. I don't think it needs cooking at all. And frankly, we don't. We just don't cook it in, that, in this kind of application. Now, one of our favorite things that we used to do for our sons, sometimes for special, because um, they loved butter, is we would chuck, we would take the kernels off the corn like this. My favorite thing to do is honestly just eat it on the cob. But we would take it off, and then um, I would get some butter, you know, going in the pan, and we would toast these up real quick with butter and salt and pepper. Oh my gosh, just that something that simple was so delicious. All right, so our corn is all ready. I'll show you kind of how much that amounts to. Excuse me, I've got like a one of those silks on me, I would say at those three, those three ears, let me look. Well, is it, I would say like about four cups here would be my guess of corn. So now we're gonna be adding some more things. We want some more different flavors in here. So let me put this aside and we're done with our onion. We're gonna save that. So the next thing we are gonna be adding, because that's for something else, is zucchini. So this is just what I like to do. Zucchini, um, or as you say, arch courgette. Uh, these are plentiful right now also. And so I thought this, and again, this you could decide to add to the pan with the poblano and the onion, 
but I actually love zucchini, especially when they're in season. And this is a small one, which means it'll be nice and tender and yummy. So I'm just gonna dice this up and throw it in. But if that bothered you, again, you could totally whiz it up just a little bit. As Archie knows, these cook up quick, they get soft quick, and that's why I'm not cooking it because I want it to stay crunch, crunchy-ish. Not that zucchini are incredibly crunchy, but I don't want it to get soggy for sure. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slice it into some slabs. They like to stick to the knife. And then I'm gonna dice, I'm gonna make them into um, strips, and then I'm going to dice that up. So let me get that. So we just have a little bit of prep with cutting here today. But they are a little bit st sticky, not that they're sticky, but they have, I think, a little bit of a film when you cut them. Um, I don't know if it's the liquid or water that's in the vegetable, and so it does tend to stick to your knife. So I'm just trying to get that off, and then I'm gonna dice these. That's exactly what I'm gonna do here. So once I get them all in those strips, I can dice them up, and I'm gonna add them to my corn. We love vegetables here, so I'm gonna add them all, but you know what? I might just add not quite all, because I don't want there to be as much zucchini as there is corn. So I, I think there's about half less. Oh, I'm checking it all in. You know what? If you did not want that much zucchini in your corn salad, you could, of course, leave maybe half of it out, but we love it. So I'm gonna definitely make it our way. And there we go. All right, so the next thing we're gonna be doing is getting some tomatoes ready. So these are the beautiful tomatoes I was showing you. I'm gonna get some rinsed, and some of these have little tops on them, so I need to get that off first. Let me catch up while you guys are doing that. And, oh, Barb, I totally recommend the Jersey corn pie. It is so delicious. My mom at, and dad actually had it for the first time when we were all up the lake because they just hadn't been up at the lake during the summer usually. And um, anyways, they very much enjoyed it. It is such a treat. It is one of my favorite things for sure. So I'm going to get some of these tops off and get these tomatoes quartered. I think because these are a nice shape, I'm just going to get them quartered. I do maybe two more. I love the sweet tomatoes. So I'm going to get these washed. So they grow lots in France, but it's for the duck and geese, yes. And I will say, um, May, that, you know, um, corn is certainly used in feed for livestock, but the corn, it's my understanding, the corn that is used to feed the livestock is a much starchier variety of corn, whereas the sweet corn that we make out, not, not that we make, that we grow out here, you know, is that sweeter corn. Um, and that's why I think so many of us enjoy it so much, for sure. Yes, uh, yes, and think about DS, I agree. Um, and it is heavy in Mexican culture. And I think about corn tortillas, and I think about, but in so many cultures um, from, you know, when you think about grits, when you think about polenta, like that goes across many different um, cultures and traditions, for sure. Hello. Oh, hey, Hubs is here. We're just having a little chat about corn. Corn fritters with salsa, that sounds phenomenal. I love corn fritters. So Archie, you said, you've heard USA folks say that our fresh corn is terrible and I'm inclined to agree. So I wonder, it just must be more of a starchy variety. What's that? Their corn in um, Britain because oh, really? this is so sweet. It's like, yeah, it's like, it's like sugar. Yeah. And it's so juicy, too. Oh, tomato. I'm going to cut some tomatoes, Archie. Does that help? Because I said courgette, and now I'm saying tomato with my favorite tomato knife. Archie, you know, friend, that I would give anything to naturally speak the way you do. It would, I would sound so much more interesting instead of my American accent. <laughs> I sound pretty, yeah. We'll see that. You need to get your little um, microphone on, babe. All right. So I'm just getting these quartered. And again, just trying to stay a small size. Uh, but these will be one of the larger things. Will you get the shrimp out while you're there? Do you see those there? 
it was funny when I was getting the shrimp cleaned and ready. I was a little sad because the shrimp we all ha we had in North Carolina that were Carolina shrimp were just absolutely fabulous. And I'm kind of a little disappointed going back to the frozen shrimp that we that we get here. They're de they're fine. <laughs> They're fine, but when you have like fresh local shrimp, fresh local anything, I mean, it's just so much better. Hopefully there'll be some corn left for our salad, folks. What do you think? I'm hungry. Well, we're gonna be eating, isn't that good news? <laughs> so as I said, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a Mexican spin on this. Let me get these tomatoes in. So we have green, we have yellow, we have red, which makes a gorgeous salad, which I love. And then the next thing I'm gonna do for a little spice, cause you know, Philly likes her spice, is I'm gonna put some jalapeno in here. Um, I, you could, again, if you wanna temper the spice, if you're doing a similar um, recipe, what we're doing today, you could add it to the pan and cook it down a little bit. Um, but I actually, I want the poblanos add just that like, I don't know how, to, how would you describe poblano pepper flavor? Because they're not spicy. They're just different. I love poblanos. Um, yeah, those, those are them in there. But, but this gives that bite, which is something I do want. And this is like a funny shape. Look at this. Watch out, babe. Look at this jalapeno. It's smiling. But it makes it a little more difficult cutting, if I'm being honest. So I'm going to just try to get, what I like to do to avoid the seeds is just kind of get some slices, some little cheeks off of it. Of course, if you like it really spicy, um, you can add the seeds. I first, what I find I need to do is taste up my, one of my jalapenos to see how spicy they are, because then I know what to do. You know, the habanero almost has less of a pepper taste than you think it was going to have. Poblano. That makes, that's what I said. You said Wait. habanero. Oh, I'm sorry, poblano. By the way, real quick, this jalapeno is pretty mild, so I am, they are smoky. That's what I was going to say, but especially when you char the outside, um, it becomes really smoky, which is kind of why I wanted to get some color on them. So you have to make a phone call? Yep. All right. Is it going to be long? Uh, how long? Um, like 15 minutes? I'll make it over by 15 minutes. Okay. Hubs has to make a phone call. All right, so I'm gonna get, so I'm just giving these, the, the jalapeno is not that hot. Um, and I don't really love the texture of seeds, so I'm gonna just keep the seeds out. It's not for the heat. A little disappointing, this fella. He could have been hotter. So I'm putting the whole thing in for sure. Um, by the way, oh my gosh, I have to share because all my foodies are here. Well, almost all my foodies are here. I know we're missing a few foodies. So I, when I went to um, the market today to get the corn, sorry, I'm shedding. I got to wash my hands now because, you know, like any of, uh, I think, May, you've got long or at least long-ish hair, like shoulder length hair, you know, just, I feel like I'm shedding like a, one of my pooches did. But um, anyways, so there was a fella, we had a farmer's market that's nearby on Wednesdays and I got this and it is homemade harissa. And he had samples out, and it, he said it's a Tunisian harissa. Because um, I think the one that I have from Amini, Mini, I'm not sure how they say it, is, I think, um, Moroccan. Um, but anyways, this is phenomenal. I cannot wait to use this for some many things in the future. It had so much powerful flavor than the one that I you know, have in the fridge. And there's nothing bad about the one I have in the fridge. It's just more watery. It's more... It's less like a spice paste. This is more like a paste that's more, well, I'll show you. I'm sorry, I digress from our little corn salad here for a second, but I'm just so excited about this. And, and plus this one's mild. This is a very common harissa. But like when you look inside, it's kind of, it almost looks like a tomato, not even tomato paste, like almost between a tomato paste and a tomato sauce. Um, but this is truly like a spice paste. So I'm super excited about it. And so stay tuned for some yummy things with that. Back to our corn salad. Um, for those of you just coming in, we have, I took, I husked the corn. I took the corn off the cob. We've added in here um, diced zucchini, 
quartered cherry tomatoes, um, diced uh, jalapeno. Then over here, we had some diced sweet onion and poblano, giving some lovely color in our pan. I'm gonna get this turned back on so our shrimp can enter the equation. Meanwhile, I'm not gonna cut my avocado yet, but I'm gonna make um, my crema. So I do want to, this is some, this is to zhuzh it up. So if you just wanna make it simple, you don't need the crema, the crema is just kinda of nice. Um, it's nice to drizzle on top. So for my crema, I like my cremas to have a little bit of sour cream. Besides, you could just use mayonnaise. Of course, I'm using light, because you know I like my light mayonnaise. So I'm gonna put equal parts mayo and sour cream. And then in a store by us, we are able to get um, the adobo, you know, chipotles. It's already in a paste, which is really nice because we don't even have to um, worry about that. Can you put my sour cream away, sweetie? It's really good. I know it's very good. So I'm gonna get a little paste out here. A little goes a long way. And I see I need to get more paste. And this just smells so good. So I'm getting some of that paste in there. Oop. And then I'm just gonna mix it up. And it's gonna have a lovely hue. And then I'm gonna put this in a Ziploc bag and snip off the end. And then we can squeeze the crema all over our salads. You see that? So super easy. You could just use mayo. I like using mayo and um, sour cream. So that crema is ready to go. Next, we're gonna season our shrimp. So for our shrimp to season, I'm just gonna add, I'm keeping it simple because I want the corn to be the star. And whoopsie, sorry friends, in my, my condiment problem I have here in my fridge. Um, I want the shrimp to be the star. So I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm actually just gonna use some adobo seasoning. Um, and adobo has salt, white pepper, and I think it has garlic and onion powder in it. So that way it just keeps it simple. I can just use this on there. But you could make the shrimp spicy. You know I like a spicy shrimp, but I actually just want it to be like really fresh, clean flavors, and then a little smoky spice with the crema, which again, nothing's gonna be super spicy, but I kind of want it that way. I want it just to be fresh and tasty. And I think everything's ready here. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil for my shrimp. Love the oil in a spray. So where'd you get this recipe? I'm sure you said. I didn't, I made it. Remember, I was when I made this the first time, it was just me being creative. I think it, the first time I made one of these was for lunch because we were, I was telling we were sick of like the lettuce lunches. So that's what we did. I'm gonna put a little more seasoning on this side. Wanna make sure my shrimp are seasoned. All right, a little bit there. And I will say times that we've gotten bored in the winter time, we have used it, we have used it. We have used frozen corn for it too, but it's so much better with sweet corn. So absolutely recommend that. Okay, I'm gonna get my avocado diced up while my shrimp are cooking. Let's see if this is a good one. And I'm missing the chat, so I need to, uh, I need to catch up on y'all. Get the shrimp, the butter, butler. Um, has the butler gained a few pounds? No, he has not. Oh my goodness. That he hurts. says, he says, I dare you to spend a day at work with a habanero in your underpants. That would be interesting. Drew, hey Drew, welcome to the stream. It's wonderful to have you on. How does it feel to be back home, Diaz says. What was the highlight of your vacation? Best thing you ate. Well, I will tell you, the best thing I ate was actually one of Hub's entrees. And that, can you describe the catfish that you had at Blue Point? Oh, God, that was Talk about that, because that way I can focus well, on I mean, this. It was really, it was just a, it was a fried catfish. It, was just... it wasn't just a fried catfish on your plate, though. There were other things on the plate, which is well, part of what made it so good. Yeah, I don't remember. Oh, my goodness. So, Arch, really Hubs is not helping me out. I wanted him to do some chatting so I could focus on cooking, and he's not remembering. So, the catfish, um, which was perfectly fried and lightly, not greasy, lightly, lightly, lightly dredged, absolutely delicious. I mean, just fresh and scrumptious, but it was on a bed of, of this slaw 
that I don't know exactly what their dressing one was, but it was absolutely delicious slaw. And then it had, had a sauce. It had a sauce, so like they they had like a homemade tartar sauce, but it was spicy and it, it was. Oh, you don't even have your voice nope. on yet. Oh my goodness, babe. Um, it was absolutely amazing. Um, it, it just, like, we were both eating it, and we were both just... Yeah, you were eating a little bit too much of it. <laughs> the man lies. I think I had one bite. I would have loved to have had more bite. He wasn't offering. He was being stingy with it's his catfish. Can you imagine really, that? It's really good. Look at these avocados. Absolutely beautiful. Perfect. All right. My shrimp are going to be done soon. I do not want them overcooked, so I'm actually going to, and I have, look at, I've got lots of um, yummy bits on the bottom that I'm going to, because this pan has seen better days, but I want to get that up because that's yummy flavor. So I'm using my spatula to get those bits up. I want all that to go in the salad. Be yummy flavor. Good, 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 good. All right. Let me show you all. So look at those gorgeous shrimp. Not quite as gorgeous in, as in Carolina, but they will have to do for tonight. All right, so next time, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get my avocado scooped out, cut up, and then we are going to drizzle, oh, I forgot the cilantro, drizzle some lime and spray a little bit of a um, neutral oil, not much, just a little bit on the salad, um, just to make sure it's not too, too limey. And then we will get things kind of all together. So what's so, your favorite thing to do on vacation? Read my books. I read two books during the week. And that I just don't always have the time to do, especially novels. And they were great beach reads. You know You're what I mean? such a tryhard. I, I, I read one book. <laughs> but that's good for you. That's good for you. Uh, Neither one of us spend enough time reading for pleasure. Except and my book for on was vacation. longer, I will say that. So. I read two books. Your it's, book was not longer. It was longer. It was not longer. <laughs> it was longer than one of yours. Well, maybe it was longer than one of yours, but I read two, and my other one was definitely just as long as yours was. I don't think so. Okay. You talk to a man, he gets into a conversation about size, right? There you go. <laughs> All right, so I've got my lime. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get this stuff seasoned. This is already seasoned, so we're good here. So I'm going to get this seasoned with some salt, some pepper. I still have to do my cilantro. Put that out of the way. I love pepper. And some lime juice. So I've got my squeezer. Now, the tomatoes are sweet, but they do have a little bit of acid. So I'm just going to do a half of a lime. And I'm going to do a little bit of my, this is avocado oil, neutral spray, just a little bit. I'm going to get my cilantro. Put this over here. My beautiful cilantro. So I'll get some of that cut. What was your favorite thing about vacation? My favorite thing about vacation was going, I went to, I don't know if you said this or not, but typically what I do is I'll get up and I'll run or I'll do whatever, and then I go to the beach. I take everything down to the beach. He's such a good guy that way. Um, like chairs and the umbrella, and I set up, I set up our spot like at 8.30, 9 o'clock, and, mm -hmm. and I just kind of sit there for, and read a book or just do nothing for a couple hours. And then you guys typically come out about 10. Yes, because I'm not as, in as much a rush. I do a power walk or a beach walk. Um, by the way, I put about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more of cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, you could just leave it out or you could add um, parsley. But it's, uh, it's interesting how things change because my favorite time used to be like towards the end of the day, like the late afternoon, sit out there with a the beer, but it's the actually- The mornings were exceptional this week. Yeah, they were beautiful. The mornings, the, the ocean was calmer, except for the one day. They were truly exceptional this, this, yeah. this so week. Yeah, so that's, uh, that was cool. I enjoyed that part. 
All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our serving And of course, spending time bowl. with you. Of course. And also, the morning's just quieter, and it's less crowded, and I feel like um, it's just a great time to read a book. So I'm going to put this on. And by the way, I remember I was a little worried about putting too much zucchini in. I actually think having that whole, it wasn't a huge one, but having that whole one in was actually a good decision. I, I think... I think that was quite nice. I don't feel like there's too much zucchini. I feel like there's just enough. There's plenty of corn. We will not be eating all of this salad, but, um, but you know, I think it's gonna be lovely. And then what I wanna do, because, so let me just show you this. There you go, so it's not done yet. It's not done yet. So what I wanna do is I wanna take these avocado pieces and kind of dot them around be honest, I don't know if I need the other half, but have we ever had too much avocado? No. Just like there's never too much bacon, right? Avocado is that thing to me. So we're going to just be plentiful with the avocado. What the heck? I mean, honestly, it's a, it's a quite a, a low-cal meal. The shrimp, you know, I did not use a lot of oil. Um, we have a crema, but it was used with I'm gonna put actually some of these just in the middle, make it pretty. I'll eat that. That's what I'll do. I'm gonna off my hands. I'm gonna put some um, cilantro leaves down because, as you all know, I love cilantro. And they are very, this, the ones here are really pretty. They're quite large. So I think they'll look nice throwing some of these on. I mean, some of them are, are downright huge cilantro leaves. There we go. Can you see chat or I was just wondering if you knew what was going on in chat. It's okay if you don't. Me? Yeah. No, I was okay. doing other things. All so. right. Let me look at chat because I don't want to ignore y'all. I appreciate y'all coming. I'll go on. For uh, checking out dinner. So I'm just throwing some cilantro leaves here. You don't have to do this, but it looks pretty. And then I'm going to go get the shrimp. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move my shrimp off and add them at the end. Again, I'm looking for presentation here. Whoopsie, I had a little runaway shrimp. So tell me what I'm missing, babe. Archie said I'm being a little bit of a knob. <laughs> Did someone call me a limey? That's what he said. And then uh, um, <laughs> I was probably spent the holiday with Jen. Well, I will say this. What? Everybody spent the holiday with Jen. What? We were all... Oh, yeah, we had gin and tonics. Yeah. We had, um, I enjoyed some watermelon margaritas. I'm going to use my avocado spoon. Now, this is the, um, the darker poblano and um, onion, sweet onion. Look at that color. So it's just May nice said, to have a little looks contrast. looks delicious. And, and Archie said, Phil, will you do a, a whole stream with an English accent, please? Oh, coming right up. And... Um, as long as I can say what. Um, DS said, did you say we, you have a local farmer's market? Yes. Enjoy those. We have two, actually, right? Yes, we have two. Um, although the one on Wednesdays is definitely not as big. I just have to taste this. Mm. It's definitely not as big as the one on the weekend that's a little further away. Um, so I'm just going to place all my lovely, and my hands are clean, so I'm just going to get these all placed on here, all these lovely shrimp. And you can see that this has made quite the meal. You could always make this as a side, you know, at, at barbecue, especially because there's no, if you don't use a crema, there's no mayonnaise. And so there's nothing that really can go bad, um, which makes it nice. But a crema is nice, I will say. Mm, okay, now for the crema. So you guys have all seen me do this before. I'm just going to open up my bag. Flip it kind of mostly outside, so I have a little, I have a little bucket here. I'm going to get my crema in there, and then I'll snip off an end, and I will squeeze. So we have a pretty little drizzle of crema, and you could make this a lime crema if you don't have adobo. Um, that would be absolutely delicious. You could just have it be sour cream if you wanted. I'm going to snip off the end. All right, let's see. 
see if I can get this to look nice. Let's see here, friends. Of course, if you have one of those, you know, mustard or ketchup bottles that look that the pros use, you could use that. But this, and I feel like I need one more lovely, um, what do you call it, cilantro, because they all got hidden. I wasn't thinking with my cilantro. I should, have, I should have kept some up top. But look at this. Look at that. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Knew that was going to happen. Oh, goodness gracious. But look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. Do you see that? In fact, I want, you know what I want to do? i got to clean that up, and I want you to see the overhead for that. Let me turn this light up because it really is a stunner. And like I said, you know, this one has a, a Mexican influence, but you could have it be, um, you could make one using the corn with an Italian influence. You could put burrata on it. You know, there's so many different things. And actually, um, um, cotilla cheese would be great on this also. Let me show you. I just want to show you the above with this. Make sure I'm getting it right. There you go. Oh, is that right? There you go. Very nice. So there you go. I still feel like I'm a little off. There we are. There's the salad. So now it's time to taste, babe. It's your favorite part, and you've been nibbling on everything, so you've got to be excited about that. Oh, shucks. Sorry, friends. We have an earthquake here. We don't really have an earthquake. It just seems like it. All right. Come on, Brad. It's tasting time. Okay. So then I am going to use, uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to use this. This isn't pretty, but it'll do the job. I'm gonna get a nice scoop. Make sure we have at least two shrimps so we can try the shrimp. There you go. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. I need to pick up. Yeah, there you go. You're kind of like hogging the side there, love. Mmm. We'll get some tomato. Corn is really sweet. There's a little bit of heat from the peppers, but not a lot. Fresh, the, um, really good. The juice from the lime gives you a bite, a good bite, you know, that helps it not be too rich. Like it- Well, the creme is, and the shrimp are good. What I love is it's salty, sweet, but it has the, um, the acid exception. of the lime and has the richness of the, of the shrimp. It is- That's, and, That's really good. And it's don't exceptional. You, and don't, thank you, babe. And don't you think the Cooking the poblano mm -hmm. and the onions kind of give it a little something, something there that brings a little interest having some of it be cooked, but then the rest raw. So there's a contrast in textures, flavors, everything. It is absolutely delicious. We might eat that whole salad. <laughs> so friends, try this or and try your version. Try what you love. Um, I'm going to switch with you. I'm going to be down there. Oh, good. Okay. Try what you... You have your, your microphone here, love. Yeah, yeah. Try what you love to do. Try the flavors that you enjoy on this, but it is delicious. And to me, it's like summer in a bowl um, with so many of our favorite things. So much is from the market, fresh produce, and absolutely delicious. So if you try it, let me know. Take pictures, share with me. Instagram, Twitter, Philly Philly Live. And thank you so much, you guys, for your support. I absolutely enjoy um, chatting with you all. And Archie, thank you again for the shout out in your um, chili crisp courgette video. I really appreciate that. Um, Archie Pie makes the best pies. So you want to make sure and check him out um, on his channel, Chef Archie Pie. And um, also, uh, I don't have my schedule yet. I'm working on it. So it is the end of August, which means September 1 is Friday, I think, right? I think September 1st is Friday. Yeah. So between now and then, I've got to get my schedule together and get that um, posted. So I will let you know when it happens. So I don't know yet when we're going to meet again or when we're going to eat again. 
So until we do, um, farewell, friends, but I will be dropping it soon. So just be on the lookout. And thank you, love, to you all. And have a great week. And he's laughing at me. So you guys have a great week. Take care. See you.